Hello, my name is Kyle, and today I'll be teaching you how to count the Linux processes that have been forcefully killed using Honey Potion, an open source project that allows us to harness the power of eBPF with the easiness of writing Elixir code. If that interests you, let's get started. First up, if you have not set up your mix.exs to add Honey Potion as a dependency, first visit the video on the description for a guide on how to use Honey Potion. Assuming that that is done, let's get started with writing our program. We will keep it in the lib folder and in this case let's call it forceq.ex. The first step is to get the boilerplate out of the way. We use these lines to be able to define our program. Here we have the module name, here we show that we want honey to translate this file and here we have the main function that will be translated. With that completed, the next step is to think what we want our program to do. Our objective is to create a counter of how many times a certain PID has been killed. As we want to listen to system calls of the kill type, we should add sysenterkill as our add sec, in other words, as the trigger of our program. To get information on the processes that have been killed and the arguments used to kill it, we can access the ctx variable. To see more on the format of the ctx variable relative to your add sec, in other words to your trigger, you can visit this directory and get the file sysenterq format. By observing the format, we can see that the interesting variables are the sig for the argument of the system queue and pid for the process id that has been queued. Let's assume now that we want to filter out what arguments we want to track and let's suppose that in this case it is the argument 9. In other words, processes that are queued by using the q-9pid command. For that, let's add a conditional for the argument and if that argument is 9, we want to set a variable to 1 to say that a PID has been killed. Great, we are almost done. However, if you try to execute our program right now, the variable described in our condition will run in the kernel and die without being recognized by the user program at all, which is not the desired behavior. We want to print out the variables that have been killed. Thankfully, Honey Potion provides us with a tool that solves both problems, the one of keeping variables and the one of printing them. That tool is a map. Think of maps as a location of memory that can be accessed by the user. To create a map, we use the defmap macro, which will take in a name. Let's call this map system kills. The map also takes in a type and a maximum number of entries. In this case, we want a hash map to keep the process ID as keys, and we want a decent size, so let's set it to 64 for now. Returning to our condition, we can now run a BPF map update element to set in our map system kills the PID to 1. Finally, to have our program print out the map, we give it a print attribute and set it to true. Success! We have our program complete. Let's now try and execute it to see it in practice. First, to compile our program, we head to our project folder and compile it with mix compile minus minus force. With that done, we go to the lib bin folder to find and execute our binary. Don't forget to give administrator privileges to the program as that is needed for eBPF programs. Here we can see that it currently does not print anything of interest. That is because we have yet to forcefully queue a process with the argument 9. To do that, I suggest opening up two terminals, one with the htop where we can find its own process ID and one to do the killing. Now with the PID of htop, we run kill-9 PID and watch as htop dies. You can see that our map now prints the old PID of htop, showing that it has been killed. This can be repeated up to 64 times as that is the size we defined for our map. Feel free to have fun with the force queue program by, for example, changing the argument that has to be used to queue processes or by removing it completely. An easy way to experiment with these programs is to clone our repository and follow our guides in the examples folder. And with that, you have your own system queues counter. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.